All right, so I've finished the basic requirements of the exercise one by making five or more layers of black clean line art and then transforming them, rotating them so that they become an original composition, ideally in a way that's not recognizable by the original content creators, right? Though I still think I probably need to mess with this a little bit more for that to be the case. Mine was based on a children's book called Charlie Parker Plays Bebop. And now I'm going to do the optional steps. So the extra finishing example. Once you've done the black lines, now we can add textures and color to our black line shape. And the way we do that is we go back to a Google image search. So I'm just going to search Google Images get to a Google image search, right? Different than a regular Google search. And in this, I'm going to search for something that relates to my content, like uh, Bebop Color Comics 1930s. Because I kind of like these colors, this energy. And maybe I find something I think is really interesting. Actually, this comic book cover of Cowboy Bebop is kind of our assignment. It's a nice jumble composition. But let's say I like this one. So I'm going to open that image in a new tab. It's okay if it's not high resolution. I'll show you why. It's always better if it is, but if it's not, that's okay. So this isn't super high resolution, but I'm going to save it to my desktop. Command D to navigate to the desktop. Then I can go back to my search. That's why I open link in a new tab. Let's go ahead and use the tools and search for large images. I'm going to find one other that is kind of like the, the colors and the energy and the texture of, preferably without a lot of words. So another Cowboy Bebop one, open image in new tab. I like this. That's kind of nice. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. All right, now this is a way of compositing with colored pixels instead of just black pixels. And we played a little bit with this with exercise zero and making, making our own uh, avatar using PhotoP if you did it that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these black lines in PhotoP and I'm going to drag in on top of them all, these new color layers. And then as soon as I drag them in, they come into the smart objects. They come in with a transform box, actually with a free transform box, which allows me to scale them, to warp them, even though they're not rasterized yet. It will do it as a filter but it still won't allow me to erase. So I really want to emphasize those colors and those shapes I like the most. And I want to spread this out like cookie dough so it covers all of my black shapes. It's like wrapping paper. You got to pick the wrapping paper that's big enough for the gift you want to wrap. Then I hit return. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the desktop, function F11. Find the other one. I'm going to layer these on top of each other. And this one, I only want this edge of it. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. I'm going to zoom out, transforming it bigger, move it over. I'm just going to stretch it until it covers all the area. Of my black shape design. That should do it. Now just move it in place. Like that. Hit return. Okay. Now I'm going to blend these two. I'm not going to blend them by erasing from them. 
I'm not even going to rasterize them. Instead, I'm just going to play with the opacity, blend them into each other. Make sense? So if I like that, now what I'm going to do is select both of them. This is how you can joint rasterize. Hold down shift so that they're both highlighted. And then we're going to go to layer, merge layers, or the shortcut is command E. And it teaches that to you. What that does is it makes a new layer out of these two layers. There it is. That is no longer low opacity. We've just made a new kind of color blend. That's a big part of compositing with color is playing with opacity. And Danny, I'll be right there. So now it also rasterized it because I created new pixels. So it's no longer a smart object. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to similarly combine all of my layers into one layer but I don't want to lose all the layers in case I want to change them later. So this is the trick. Just like I did with the color, I'm going to select only my black layers, all five of them, by holding down Shift and selecting all of them so they're all highlighted. Then I'm going to hold down Option, very important to hold down Option, then go to Layer and say Merge Layers, just like before. But this time I'm holding down Option. So instead of changing those five layers into one layer, when you hold down option and say merge layers, when you have multiple layers selected, it takes all of those selected layers and it merges them into a new layer that it puts on top of the others, which is the best of both worlds. It's kind of the same thing saving as a PNG does. So now it's all in one place. Why is that helpful? Now I have a color and I have a black and white all in one place. What I want to do to squeeze this so it fits on the screen. Ah, ah. Darn full screen. Okay, now what I want to do is use my magic wand and I want to select on this combined black line art layer all the empty space. Do I want contiguous on? I actually want contiguous turned off. So it gets all of those empty spaces. To kind of see what you're doing, you can turn off your eyeball and zoom in, and you can see that it's selecting all of those black lines now. But it's actually selecting the empty space around those black lines. So how do we get it to select only the black lines? We invert the selection. We go to Select Inverse. Then we can move that selection onto our color layer. Select our color layer, and now we're going to copy Command J, instead of deleting, we copied in case we want to do it a different way. And what copying does is it took our selection from the black lines and it copied it from our color layer and made a new cutout, just like Arturo Herrera cuts his coloring book pages out of felt. And now we have a cutout in color. I'm going to turn the white background on. And now this feels a lot more like my own original composition just because those original black lines get replaced with this custom energy and color. So how do I save it? Same way, you want to make sure it's saved as a PSD first, that you update your PSD. So you can just hit Command S, or say File Save. And then, this time, because I saved it as a JPEG before, I'm going to turn it off, turn off the background, and save it as a PNG. But when I export it so it doesn't have the exact same name as my black PNG, I'm going to add color to the end of it. And it's going to save to my downloads folder. I'm going to move that to my desktop. I'm going to open up my folder. And now I have both a color PNG and a black PNG. The black PNG has no background and is black. The color PNG has no background and is colored. But in Canvas, that's a white background, so it will look like it's on white. And if I want to add that, it's remember it's optional. If I want to add that to Canvas, I just use the three dots 
in the corner and edit my original post. I never want you to delete from your original. I just want you to refine and add. If you need to shrink your image to fit on, we're about ready to do our presentation critique. So when we present our work, I'm going to ask you to stand, introduce yourself, just with the name you want to be called. The only first name that we have two of in the class is Kindle, so we have Kindle C and Kindle M. And remember that this color option is optional. So I'm going to demonstrate a presentation critique for you. And I will show it up on the screen, but you got to have it up in Canvas. So have the name you want to be called up in Canvas. And then when we present it in class, I'll make it nice and big on the screen. And then you, you can look at it on your own screens too, because the projector isn't as nice as our screen contrast and resolution. And the question you're going to answer for today's presentation critique is something that you like. So something I like about mine, though there are definitely areas that need refinement, I like the, the chaotic energy and how that kind of fits with the musical notes. And since bebop is a, a jazz freeform style that varies from melody, this feels like it has that kind of moving energy. And that's it. My name is Carl. And that was my project. So that's what we're going to do.